What's going on everyone? This is Brian Weber here with another video for you guys and, and this video I'm going to give you a little breakdown of a recent swing trade that I just took on Constellation Brands Incorporated and ticker symbols STZ. So it was a bullish swing trade. I'm going to break it down for you like how I found the stock and then go through my technical analysis on setting up the trade and then picking the option and then uh, going into like how I managed the trade and where I exited for a profit. So typically I'm not going to give too much detail, but you can use, I have these scanners on Finviz and it's pretty cool because you can create a bunch of different scanners based on, you know, a bunch of parameters that you want to put in here. And I have one, one, uh, way of finding good stocks of swing trade, either bullish or bearish, is just looking at relative volume, seeing, you know, if there's a lot more activity in that stock, or is there more people participating, you know, and maybe there's a pattern that you can then recognize on the chart to see, you know, if there's a flag forming to for push up or push down, um, and then you can set up your trade accordingly. But let's take a look at STARS, or uh, Constellation Brands, STZ, so actually when I found this stock, it looked like this. Right after earnings, as you can see, there's a lot of volume that came in. So that's how it popped up on my scanner. So then I looked for, I said, okay, let me uh, draw my support and resistance. I'm gonna draw one below and one above and also any major trend lines. So I usually go to the weekly chart first because if I've never looked at a stock before, and I haven't been following it, I wanna look at further timeframes, especially in swing trading, and wanna look at the weekly and monthly charts. But the weekly is good. You can see we have a major downtrend line up here near the all-time high, and then there's another one right here, but we're also not anywhere near in that area. So those aren't really a concern to me at the moment. Maybe once the price gets there, I can look to take another trade. But this big weekly candle right here is, is a concern to me. So I drew a, support line or it would actually be a resistance line right now at 18039 which is just the open of this candle it's as simple as that and you can kind of see how it aligns with some consolidation over here and you can see we're on the weekly chart we're right on the 200 day sma as well and the nine day ema is just below there and we have the 50 all the way up here so let me go back to the daily once i have that drawn but i actually this upper level too this would be this candle right here. This is a nice pivot level right here. It's just the low of this bullish candle. Or you could have taken the low of this candle or this one. So that that would be my first support, or uh, excuse me, first target, because I'm considering entering a bullish swing trade on this. So let's go back to the daily chart. Um, and let's just kind of show you how the price action evolved. You can see how we're below the 200 day SMA and the nine is starting to pick up and so is the 50. So let me just show you right before it broke out, you can see we're making lower highs, kind of holding this 190. Here's one, uh, 188 right here to 190 is pretty good support. And you can kind of see there's a lot of buying here. And you notice how we didn't close below 190 at all on any of these candles except maybe this day. Nope, one penny above. So that's one thing I was paying attention to, the closing prices. And then you can see there's a, there's a triangle forming here. We're making higher, lower highs and, lower, and higher lows, holding a support, which is over here if you look to the left. And that to me is, uh, to me there's like some kind of setup, there's a trade setup forming especially at a resistance area, strong resistance, especially after this big bullish move. I am looking for these types of setups usually at a resistance to take the breakouts because you can get low risk, high reward trades. I mean, you enter, you could have entered a, the break above this candle right here with a stop below there with a target. I mean, it's like a four to five hour risk trade uh, reward. You're risking say 200 bucks and your potential reward is about a thousand. You know, I like to take those types of trades when I'm swing trading. So when I saw this, I looked at, uh, let me go to a thinkorswim. This is actually the thinkorswim chart, but I use this mainly for my futures live data when I'm day trading. 
and do some analysis in there. But I looked at the May 195 calls. I actually have them. This is the chart for the option right here. So when I was looking at it, it was about right here. You could usually draw a fib from the low to the most recent low to high. You can kind of see where the entry, I didn't get in here. I got in my average was at 255. So the entry wasn't that good. But the stop, I, I never risked more than $200 on the trade. Originally, I think I entered a little too early. If I go back to this trade, I was entering on the break above these two candles. Yeah, so break above like 191.60 because I was a tweezer top. And then the stop is below this candle. So it was at like one, low was at 188.63. Um, I actually, if I go to my Twitter really quick, I have the actual setup in there. Let me go to my profile. Yeah, so 188.60, and that was actually the setup there. So let me go back to here. So the stop was below this candle, about three pennies below there. And so I entered a little too early. You can see that uh, I had my stop at 175, and we actually got here to 185. So I missed my stop by about 10 cents, which is, which is too close for comfort sometimes, but it, it kept me in the trade. Um, next time you got to work on getting a better entry. But once I saw, this is one of those things that I'm, I've been practicing is adding to winners and not losers. Um, I set up, I picked up, uh, the reason why I picked this 195 option really quick, I usually try to pick options around a 50 delta and ones that are around at the money. Or if I expect a bigger move, I'll pick one out of the money, depending on like how, what's the volatility, you know, how cheap are the options. You can look down here, or the current IV percentile, 42%, so it's below 50, so the, it's on the lower, the cheaper end of the range, I would say, although it could be cheaper. This probably because of the VIX has been selling off quite a bit lately. But then after looking at this, I want to see a, a decent open interest around 1,000, and I want to see some volume typically. You know, I'll look at the chart, the daily chart, and see if there's any action happening, uh, which is where I go here this is the 195 may call option on stz and you can see there's a lot of volume that started picking up in here so that that gives me that, that tells me there's liquidity and i can get in and out of this option especially if i'm using a stop which is the biggest concern with options when you're using stop losses you don't always get filled almost always have slippage and it can be kind of detrimental to your account because you're it's not just like five or 10 cents sometimes, it could be up to 50 cents. You know, if there's no one there, no one has an order there to buy or, or sell the, buy to open or sell to open the option from you. But um, let's go back to the daily chart. So I'll show you why I added. When I saw this candle come in with decent volume, there's more volume than the, the previous day. I said, okay, I'm gonna add one. I'm going to add one above a break above there and I'm going to move my stop up and put it below the low of this candle, the 189.32. So I added one on the break. It kind of formed a doji, pushed and tested that 200 day SMA. So right now I'm only I was only risking $200. My stop was pretty much right below this candle. I think it was like 89.20 or something. And then my cost basis was still risking only $200. So the next day, you can see what happened. There was a, a huge gap up. We gapped above the 200 day SMA. So there's a lot of volume that came in. So there's good follow through. And based on this resistance right here, that's where I took my profit. It was it moved very quickly. If you look at the five minute chart, uh, I mean, two within 10 minutes, it hit that area. So it had to be really quick and I had to have an order waiting to get out there and was able to get out. My average was at 255 and my exit was at $6 and 30 cents. And if we go here in my Fidelity account where I trade my options, you can see this is where I bought the first two, 275 was not a good entry, but it gave me a dollar risk because it's only risking $200. 
and kept me in the trade. And then once I saw that I could add to this position because it looked like a potential big winner with that volume pushing out of the downtrend, uh, that bullish flag, I added another one here at $2.15, which gave me a $2.55 cost basis. So what's that? That's not even $800 that I put it in this trade, risking 200 of it and sold it at $6.30 for 147% return. Um, and that, these are the type of swing trades that I look for. I mean, it's a classic bull flag pattern. You're making lower highs, you're making higher lows, you're holding a support, you broke above a support on a strong volume and you're testing that and it's not failing. I mean, there are some wicks coming in, but you gotta pay attention to those closing prices. We didn't close below 190 at all, out of all these candles, which, was, which gave me confidence to add to this position and and hold you know until saw some kind of move like this right to that resistance i mean yet the it might go higher it also might go lower i'm happy with the profit i'm happy with risking two hundred dollars and i made almost twelve hundred dollars on the trade so I, i'm not mad about that and i'll look for the next trade and i have a few i'll look for on finviz you know this weekend and this upcoming week i'll keep an eye on any swing trades that i look for based on what the scanners are telling me, and then I hope to find more trades just like this one. And if I don't, I just simply won't take a trade. But I just wanted to break this trade down for you guys, and I could go into more detail if you like, but I don't want to make this video as short as possible. If you guys have any specific questions, just let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that my logo or my face popping up right now to receive a notification anytime I upload a video. And I look forward to sharing more videos in the near future with you guys and have a great rest of the day. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.